Okay, so Pi News episode 99. First up, let's have a look at everything I've covered since the last Pi News. So 98, which is here. We had the very latest version, Debian Trixie, or version 13 on the Raspberry Pi, which was nice to see. And I installed KDE Plasma and had a play around with that. I talked about a free VPN. VPNs have gone a bit crazy in the UK of late, especially on mobile phones. But uh, yeah, this one's still working very well. Got Android 16 up and running with the Google Play Store and did a full tutorial on that. Talked about the feature I'd really like on a Raspberry Pi 6, which was basically USB video out. I think it would be a really good addition to it. And there's a bit more about that in a minute. Also installed wireless Android Auto on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And that works really nicely. Showed little boards. So this is a Compute Module 5 board or Compute Module 4 so that you can save your Compute Module from repeated unplugging and plugging in. And also tested the really nice Pi and Man 5 NAS case. And I got asked about how many watts it uses when it's using the three and a half inch drive you can see pictured there. It's a pinned comment on that video. So have a look at that if you're interested in that. First up, I thought the most exciting one was Jeff Gearding showed this Compute Module 5 laptop from Argon One. And it does look really nice. I really like what they've done with it. They've even got breakouts for GPIO pins. It takes an NVMe drive. I'm just looking for the shot where he shows inside. It's also very slim as well. Now, the one that Jeff was sent is a prototype. This is the inside slot, so the CM5 is in there and the NVMe drive. Yeah, just really liked it. So we have a look at the Kickstarter. 243,000 pledged of 1180 pounds goal. 869 backers. So they've got a shell only version for people who've already got a compute module five. It's still 262 pounds. This is part of the trouble is that you, you really can't make a reasonably priced Raspberry Pi laptop because I think you just can't mass market it in the same way as you can just a standalone laptop. But Linux does run so well on a Raspberry Pi and it's so well supported as well. So many different operating systems. So 14 inch screen, 1920 by 1200, 60 hertz. It's got some conventional ports on it as well. Look. And this is the GPIO adapter, full size HDMI output, dual mics and stereo speakers, aluminium casing. It's a nice little view of the inside with the fan system. So they reckon they get six to eight hours runtime, which is reasonable. Be interested to see how they've set the display up to see if it works with all operating systems because at the moment they're saying Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu and Debian but it'll be interesting to see things like Fido OS, things like Android which use the display differently, Windows as well not that you buy this mainly as a Windows laptop but it's nice to have the option RETA Prime's done a video as well, I haven't seen that one yet and you see various configurations that you can do here so yeah, definitely nice to see and Tom's Hardware also did a write-up, nice image of it. So what they're saying, it's upgradable, great thermal performance, good screen, full Raspberry Pi GPIO, webcam is easy to use. And they're saying the sound is okay, which a lot of laptops are like that. Keyboard and trackpad are usable. So trackpad is a big one for me. I really like a nice trackpad. Even my 2010 MacBook has an amazing trackpad on it. And since then, I was always really critical of Windows trackpads. I think things have caught up a bit now and most laptop trackpads are nice, but yeah, occasionally you get one that's a bit ropey. So I won't go through the whole lot. I'll link the story so you can have a look at it, but there's all the prices and various things are listed there as well. And it's worth remembering the Crowview note from Ella Crow, which was also a Kickstarter. Now the Pi goes on the outside of this, but it also means that it's compatible with loads of other SBCs and loads of other devices as well. And they were doing those from $119. Yeah, so flexibility, the fact that it works with lots of other devices is really nice, but obviously the practicality of having to plug something into the side of it is very different to the Argon solution, which is super neat. And in fact, doesn't stand out in a coffee shop. Next up from Pimp My Life, track aircraft with Raspberry Pi and Flight Radar 24. Now you might already have this app on your phone. I've had it for a while and I really love it. You see a plane in the sky or you hear a helicopter go above, you can check where it's going, uh, what sort of vehicle it is. But with this, uh, so in this tutorial, I go through the steps to set up flight tracker that feeds data from the Raspberry Pi to the flight radar service. So you're actually submitting the information to the service. 
And the reason they do that, one of the most significant benefits to running your own flight tracker is that you get the Flight Radar 24 business account for free. That's a pricey yearly subscription you will get for free in exchange for sharing the ABS data. And I'm sure you get all sorts of extras with that. You certainly get quite a lot of adverts on the free version and it runs through all the details. So if you're interested in doing that yourself, I might be actually. It's all listed in here, nice and detailed. Now I mentioned my video on what would you like to see on a Raspberry Pi 6, uh, which was basically USB-C video output. Well, I got contacted by Ubopod, and you can see bringing full function USB-C connected to Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. And he's saying in the video that the Pi is connected to this monitor with just the one USB-C cable. So there's an adapter that he's using. So it's not built into the Pi, but it's more about being able to give you that functionality, which is great. So he's mentioned in the video that audio is transferred as well, and he's planning to build it into this board. Then the plan is to give you one full-size HDMI and one USB-C connector through this breakout board. And data is going to be transferred as well, meaning that things like touch control, mouse and keyboard can also be transferred over to the device. Because things like the Elecro laptop I mentioned just now, that takes the mouse and keyboard just from a USB-C connector with a, if you're using a Samsung DeX phone or I've moved over to a Google Pixel phone now. So that transfers mouse, keyboard, and so on. So this can be added to a Raspberry Pi now. And I won't go through the whole video because I'll, I'll basically link it, but there's also an updated video, which is this one. And in this video is talking more about the touch control. Interesting actually, because if I go to my channel, I recently did a video on head mounted displays. And recently we went to Berlin, ah, here it is. And uh, I took it and I was on the plane and I was playing Dave Mira BMX on uh, the PS2 emulator with a controller in my hand and the head mounted display on uh, from the Google Pixel phone. And it was brilliant. But actually uh, this setup or this kit comes with, this one here is an HDMI to type C adapter. The fact that this could be built into a breakout board for Raspberry Pi is a really cool addition. So we'll keep an eye on that. Next up from Raspberry Pi, uh, we had this very nice build, which is an R2-D2 robot, which uses a Raspberry Pi 3. And again, I won't go through the whole story because if you're interested in it, you'll look it up in the description. And they chose a Raspberry Pi because they can use all the different things like Python, C, C++, Ada, and FreeBasic. You also just get really good support with Raspberry Pis. There we go. The upgraded Raspberry Pi 3 version supports object detection, temperature sensors, and wireless controls. Yeah, it looks very cool. Billy Nomates 1974 sent me this message. Would you be interested in my project for Raspberry Pi 0 2W as a media server and web media server? And he linked a video, which is here. And uh, basically in it, he shows connecting three devices. So a phone, a laptop, and a smart TV. So you can see you put in the web address and it gives you access to the media that's on the Pi. And this is using a 02W, so a very inexpensive device, and plays video simultaneously on all three of them. I won't show the video, it's very short, but obviously you can have a look in the description. There's also the information on Hackaday as well about it. So there's more information, more screenshots and things like that. And I've read through it, I haven't tried it yet. It can be part of your home network, so you can use it all devices connected to the same router on your home network, it looks like. But also, if it's not on your home network, so if you're using it in the car, after, I think it was 50 seconds, it said, uh, here it is, uh, if it can't find the network after 50 seconds, then it flips over to the built-in Wi-Fi card to an access point and will stay that way until the next reboot. So it looks like you could just directly connect to it, like a Wi-Fi direct system. So very interesting. I'll definitely have a look at that when I've got more time. Links in the description. So from OMG Ubuntu, Ubuntu is changing the way it boots on Raspberry Pi. There is a major boot change coming in Ubuntu 25.10 you'll want to be aware of, but don't worry, it's for the better. So it says here, uh, because the current approach makes it a little too easy for end users to find their Raspberry Pi not booting after an update, be it due to power loss interruption during an installation or just a dodgy update. For those who run Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi as a home media server network attached storage, it means if the system fails to boot, no dice, which is especially annoying if the Pi is running at a remote location. This is why things are changing on the up and coming Ubuntu 25.10 release with Triboot, a new approach aiming to improve system recovery and reliability when running Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi hardware. 
We'll be moving to a system that will test new boot assets and automatically fall back to a known good configuration in the event the test fails. Really cool. And there's more information in the story here. And also another one about Ubuntu, uh, this is from Pharonix. Ubuntu 2510 Raspberry Pi images will be much leaner. So they'll be desktop minimal rather than the full fat desktop images. This means some applications will not be enabled by default, but there is space savings of around 777 megabytes. And I saw some updates for Pin OS. So Pin gets updated all the time and lots of patches and fixes and language and so on. I tend not to use Pin that much, only because I have so many different storage devices. But before I had so many USB sticks and SD cards and NVMe drives, I used to use it all the time, especially for looking for new operating systems. So if we go to the files section, uh, and if you don't know what PIN is, it basically allows you to multi-boot several different operating systems all on the same storage. So if you've got an SD card or an NVMe drive, and if we go to the OS folder, we can see, uh, and this would be in the order that they've been uploaded. So we've got the latest Ubuntu here, we've got Android, which is Lineage OS, the Android TV version, We've got Batacera for various different Pies, Twister OS, Recallbox, which is multi-game operating systems, more Lineage OS, Pi 4, Pi 5. Got my version of KDE Plasma on there as well, but it just is full of operating systems and is a brilliant system. I've done videos on PinOS before. I might revisit it at some point because I haven't done it for ages, and it is just a super easy way of trying out different operating systems without having to have loads of different storage devices to swap out. This is from Raspberry Pi. The one I wanted to focus on really was this, this Thinkman. It just looks cool, doesn't it? So Raspberry Pi 5 using a Pi Sugar battery. They're lithium batteries for Raspberry Pis. A homage to the Sony Walkman. They've got the official cooler in there. Using an NVMe drive, a USB headset with microphone. And there's links to the project on GitHub here as well. So software-wise, ah, here we go. There's the assembly, look, the 3D printed parts of it. Oh, I wanted to see more pictures. Ah, there's a video. So there's an hour-long video on YouTube. Ah, here we are. Here we get get to see it. So I won't show all of the YouTube video, but yeah, it opens up like a Walkman. Although the door's not meant to come off on a Walkman. But I guess you don't need access to it, really, because you're not changing out the storage medium. And Hackaday did this story, a very tiny handheld Pi from Random Alley Cat. Takes a Raspberry Pi 0 2W, 3D printed case. We particularly like the access on the underside of the machine to access Pi ports and ventilation holes. And there's a video for that as well. Let's have a look inside. Pi Maroni Hyperpixel Screen, Xbox 360 keyboard. Always nice to see inside. The 0 2W is underneath that uh, Pi Sugar board. Yeah, I'll link this if you want to see more details on it, but very impressive. There was an update to the Pico chip. This is an A4 variant. Today we're happy to announce the immediate availability of the new A4 stepping. And they've also got a hacking challenge, offering a £20,000 prize for a practical side channel attack on the Power Hardened AES library. And it goes on about it in much more detail here. And obviously you can tell them apart by seeing the A4 and the A2 variants couple of stories here from CNX and it's about micro SD Express so the Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't have native support for the newer micro SD Express standard it does support pretty fast SD cards but this is faster again and they've used the PCIe slot so you can see here there's a board and it's got a different SD card slot quite handy if your old SD card slot is broken I mean, it does take up a PCIe slot, or the only PCIe slot on the Pi 5, but it's nice to have as an option. And you can see there's various details in here and some speed tests. So we're not getting NVMe speeds, but we are getting some good speeds from SD card. The read speed is indeed better than a typical micro SD card, but the sustained write speed is close to a high-end traditional class A1, A2 micro SD card. But soon after this came, we had this story, which was even smaller. It's just sticking out of the PCIe slot. Speeds of up to 800 megabits per second. But again, not sure who's gonna really need this because we have NVMe compatibility widely on the Pi 5 and we also have pretty good speeds from SD card. But it's great to see people pushing it and getting more and more options on the Pi. Raspberry Pi Connect, remote access to a Raspberry Pi from anywhere in the world, has got improved audit log for better security. So we've got county tracking, see where events took place and spot suspicious activity, 
download CSV, download detailed logs for auditing and security reviews, and filtering focus on the specific actions important to you. Now we geolocate every event by IP address storing only the country code in order to preserve privacy. The information is included in both the web interface and the newly added CSV export option. And there's a lot more information in there if you're interested in that, but yeah, it's, it's a great product. I use it on a regular basis. And from Pharonix, patches posted for Raspberry Pi 5 Ethernet with the upstream Linux kernel. Stanimir Varbanov of SUSE posted a set of five patches today for enabling the RP1 Ethernet support as found on the Raspberry Pi 5 single board computer, plus the associated device tree changes. The patches were worked by Stanimir Varbanov and Raspberry Pi engineer Dave Stevenson. And last bit of news from official Raspberry Pi, you can flash Raspberry Pi OS images faster. So they're using various different techniques to make the images smaller. And they're talking about the boot partition, and they go into lots of details on how they do it. If you're interested, obviously you can read through, but it just means that we're downloading less. Uh, they're talking about less disk accessing, so your SD card should last longer as well. Always nice to see progress and things like that. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.